Since ancient times, humans have always been curious about the planets, stars, and their motion. They also had different ideas and beliefs about that. At that time, Nicholas Copernicus, a Polish astronomer, proposed a specific planetary model of the solar system, where he stated that, the Sun is the center of the solar system, and all the planets revolve around it. But his theory was rejected by the Church. It is also notable that, amongst its supporters was Galileo Galilei, had to face various prosecutions for his beliefs. At the same time, a nobleman from Denmark, Tycho Brahe, spent his entire life recording the observations of the planets, with his naked eye. He accumulated various information about the motion of the planet. All of his compiled data was later analyzed by his assistant, Johannes Kepler, and he arrived at three elegant laws of planetary motion. Now, these laws are popularly known as Kepler's laws of planetary motion. In this tutorial, we will uncover the details of these laws. So let's start. To describe the motion of the planets, Kepler arrived at three elegant laws of planetary motion. These are the law of orbits, the law of areas, and the law of time periods. Kepler's first law of planetary motion, also known as the law of orbits. Kepler's first law state that each planet revolves in an elliptical orbit around the Sun, and the Sun is in the focus of that ellipse. This law means that, the orbit of a planet around the Sun is an ellipse, and not an exact circle. So from this law, we know the geometrical shape of the orbits. An ellipse has two foci, and the Sun is at one of the two foci of the ellipse. The point in this ellipse, where the planet is closest to the Sun, is called the perihelion, and the point at which the planet is farther from the Sun, is called the aphelion. These elliptical orbits of the planets, are responsible for the occurrence of seasons. Now if we talk about the ellipse, then it has two axes, a major axis, and a minor axis. The major axis is the longest diameter of the ellipse. It goes through the center from one end to the other, at the broader part of the ellipse. Whereas the minor axis is the shortest diameter of the ellipse, that crosses through the center at the narrowest part of the ellipse. Half of the major axis, is called the semi-major axis, usually denoted by small a, and half of the minor axis, is called the semi-minor axis, denoted by small b. An ellipse is a shape, that resembles a flattened circle. How much the circle is flattened, is expressed by its eccentricity, which is represented by the Greek letter, epsilon. The relationship between eccentricity, along with these semi-major, and semi-minor axes is, epsilon is equal to, root over 1 minus, b square by a square. The eccentricity of an ellipse, varies from 0 to 1. If it is 0, the ellipse becomes a circle. And if it is 1, then the ellipse becomes a parabola, or essentially a flat line. So for an ellipse, eccentricity ranges from 0 to 1. Now if we talk about the planetary orbits, then only Pluto has a large eccentricity. Here is a table showing the eccentricity of the orbits of the planets in our solar system. Kepler's Second Law of Planetary Motion Also known as the Law of Areas Kepler's second law state that, the straight line connecting the Sun, and a planet crosses equal areas, in equal intervals of time. Basically, planets do not move with constant speed, along their orbits, that is their speed varies from place to place. So the line joining the centers of the Sun, and the planet, sweeps out equal parts of an area, in equal intervals of time. As we already know, the point where the planet is closest to the Sun, is called the perihelion, and the point where the planet is farther from the Sun, is called the aphelion. Hence by Kepler's second law, we can clearly understand that, the planet moves fastest, when it is at perihelion, and slowest when it is at aphelion. Kepler's third law of planetary motion. Also known as the law of periods. Kepler's third law state that, the square of the time period of the revolution of a planet, around the Sun in an elliptical orbit, is directly proportional to the cube of the semi-major axis of the ellipse. 
Kepler's third law implies that, the period for a planet to orbit the Sun, increases rapidly with the radius of its orbit. Thus we find that Mercury, the innermost planet, takes only 88 days, to orbit the Sun. The Earth takes 365 days, while Saturn requires 10,759 days to do the same. Although Kepler did not know about gravitation, when he came up with his three laws. But these laws were very important, in developing Newton's universal law of gravitation. Kepler and his theories, are important for better understanding the dynamics of our solar system, and as a springboard for new theories, that more accurately approximate the orbits of our planets. If you enjoy our videos, then don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.